Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition's top stories. The Ministry of Health and Wellness peruses the report on the USNS medical mission here. Nearly 5,000 St. Lucians benefited. St. Lucia to access grant funding from India for development projects. Bank of St. Lucia lends tangible support to government's efforts at sustainable development. All that plus the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has received a report on the United States Naval Ship USNS Comfort Medical Mission held from Monday, September 23 to Tuesday, October 1, 2019. The mission has been deemed a success. Clinics were held for six days at the Owen King AU Hospital and the National Cultural Center, where clients received services in adult medicine, pediatric medicine, dental and eye care, along with other specialized medical services. A total of 79 inclusions received the surgical procedures aboard the USNS Comfort. In addition, 48 clients received echocardiograms. A total of 4,846 clients benefited from services at the two medical sites over the time period. Adult medicine was 1,665 clients, pediatric medicine was 264 clients, dental services 756 clients, and eye care was 2,161 clients. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is extremely grateful for the support and collaboration of those who made this medical mission a success. The department also expresses its deepest gratitude to the United States Naval Ship Comfort Team for providing St. Lucians with the opportunity to receive medical services. The Department of the Public Service will on Friday, October 4, 2019, host a staff retreat at the Royalton Resort and Spa. The retreat will be held under the theme, Service Delivery, Our New Reality. More in this report from Julita Peter. The retreat will provide a forum where staff will engage in activities geared at promoting professionalism and effective service delivery. Sheila Imbert is the Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Department of the Public Service. Prior to the staff retreat, we held a management retreat where we did a comprehensive review of our strategic plan, which is supposed to be a three-year plan. And at that event, um, all the managers were able to visualize the public service and set some goals and objectives. And we're going to tie in the management retreat to the staff retreat with the hope of coming up with a strategic plan that is going to guide the work program of the Department of Public Service for the next three years. Meantime, over the past few months, staff throughout the public service has benefited from a number of self-development and professional exercises facilitated by the Public Service Training Institute and the Department of the Public Service Employee Assistance Program. The more recent one being a three-day supervisory skills training the objective was to assist participants in better understanding their role as supervisors and equip them with the requisite skills to increase their effectiveness and efficiency in the workplace. In order to facilitate the staff retreat, the Department of the Public Service will be closed on Friday, October 4th. Services at the Department resume on Tuesday, October 8, 2019. From the Communications Unit of the Department of the Public Service, Julita Peter reporting. St. Lucia, along with CARICOM member states, will soon be able to draw down on grant funding from India for development projects. A line of credit valued at 150 million U.S. dollars for climate resilience has also been allocated. CARICOM and India came to the agreements at an historic meeting on the sidelines of the just-concluded United Nations General Assembly. To San King English Francis of CARICOM News Time reports. India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi reaffirmed his country's commitment to development in the region when he engaged CARICOM heads of government in the first India CARICOM summit. The summit took place on the 25th of September in the margins of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. Prime Minister Modi spoke of plans to develop a regional center for excellence in information technology in Georgetown, Guyana, and a regional vocational training center in Belize. He also reaffirmed India's commitment to enhancing human resource capacity in the region through specialized training. The meeting agreed that the CARICOM India Joint Commission 
will continue to develop and implement concrete plans to further advance trade and facilitate diversification in the region. CARICOM Chairman Prime Minister Alan Chastanay of St. Lucia noted CARICOM's appreciation for India's continued partnership and cooperation with the community. On behalf of all my colleagues, when I say that the most important question to ask is how come it took us so long um, to get together. Uh, given our cultural ties, our historical ties, um, and clearly, as you've outlined, many of the common um, issues that we have to confront on a global and geopolitical basis. So I am looking forward to a, a very meaningful discussion on, one, the opportunity that India can offer us in the Caribbean. Uh, two, the, the opportunities that Caribbean can offer India. And three, to talk about some very critical geopolitical issues um, that hopefully we can find common ground. That report by Toussaint King English Francis. Hands Across the Sea, a non-profit organization dedicated to raising the literacy levels of children in the Eastern Caribbean, has partnered yet again with the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development in enhancing the teaching and learning experience in schools island-wide. The aim of the workshop is to train teachers as to the proper use of the Literacy Resource Guide. Chief Education Officer in the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Fiona Meyer, indicated that St. Lucia cannot have a literate population without the incorporation of reading. She urged the participants to take advantage of the workshop so as to impact the students that they come in contact with on a daily basis. I'm really, really glad that they've been able to facilitate such a workshop for our teachers, bringing our literacy coordinators, bringing our special needs units, and you, the classroom teachers, who can make or break. And particularly our infant teachers who have them so young that your impact lasts a lifetime. So I do not want us to underestimate literacy, the importance of an individual being able to read and how that can impact that person's life, their family, their community, and by extension, our country, St. Lucia. Literacy link for Hands Across the Sea, Clara Paul, indicated that St. Lucia's resources are limited. She noted that the number of bookstores on island have dwindled, and the Central Library struggles not only to stay afloat, but to obtain material interesting enough to gravitate students to it. Additionally, teachers have indicated that they are not versed on the protocol when taking students to the library. It is for this reason that the workshop will focus on the teacher resource guide. Hands Across the Sea has come to our rescue over the past 11 years. They're into their 12th year this year. And among the programs that they continue to provide the islands, that's the six islands of the OECS, are creating, rejuvenating, sustaining lending libraries, training our student librarians, developing manuals and teacher resource guides, to support the work of literacy and education. We all know that libraries support the work of, a school library supports the work of literacy and education. It helps children to develop good reading habits. And so, Hands Across the Sea has complemented the work of the child-friendly schools and the OECS Early Learners Program. District 4 Education Officer in the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Marie George Ale, expressed gratitude to the Hands Across the Sea for the initiative. This is truly an investment in human resource, in the human resource of St. Lucia. And we will therefore make maximum use of the books and the training. I wish to extend the sincere thanks to Mrs. Clara Paul and her new associate, Mrs. Sheila Surville, for executing their duties in a professional manner and of a very high standard. Your passion for improving the literacy schools in school, along with the ELP team, have impacted our schools more and more and we are now seeing improvements in student performance. Hands Across the Sea seeks to transform the child literacy landscape in the Eastern Caribbean, and every year it sends thousands of new books, over 464,000 since it started in 2007, to various educational institutions. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville.
In more education-related news, the Labehi Early Childhood Center this week was relocated to the Bexar Primary School as the Ministry of Education addresses structural issues at the center. Anisia Antoine reports. The Labehi Early Childhood Center has been relocated to the Bexar Primary School. Due to the structural integrity of the building being compromised, the school's operations needed to be moved. Fiona Meyer, Chief Education Officer at the Ministry of Education, expressed gratitude to the Early Childhood Unit for safeguarding the success of the transition. Today we were able to welcome beautiful children into the Bexo Primary School that has agreed to host them, embrace them as members of the community. And so the team is here, we've got our Education Officer here as well as our District Education Officer here to welcome the parents and the students as well to ensure that whatever happens moving forward is really about the well-being of every one of our little ones interested into our care. The Bexor Primary School initially welcomed 14 students from the Labay Early Childhood Center. Agnes Prince is the Education Officer for Early Childhood Development. This is the first day and I must say it has been such a welcoming environment. Even the children, they met me out there. They were the ones who gave me directions as to where to find the principal and they really welcomed me there. So I am sure and I can ensure that these children will welcome the children that we have here this morning. We've been speaking so much as, as to the transitioning from the early childhood centers to the primary school. Now we have an opportunity to work at this very early stage to ensure that the children are embraced by their younger pairs right here. The students of the Labay Early Childhood Center commenced school at the Bexor Primary School on Monday, September 30th, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. We'll be right back. Everyone is at risk for getting a foodborne illness. While most foodborne illness cases are mild and go unreported, long-term health complications and even death can occur from a foodborne illness. Foodborne illnesses are caused by contamination of food at any stage of preparation. If you are a food handler involved in home-based food production, meat, fish, chicken or a big shop, as a food vendor, how you prepare food can put your customers at risk. Do you know the risks and how to avoid them? The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards can help you. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. Bank of St. Lucia, BOSL, has lent tangible support to government's efforts at sustainable development. BOSL teamed up with the St. Joseph's Convent to sensitize students on the importance of creating a sustainable environment for future generations. For the students of the St. Joseph's Convent, it was a Friday morning assembly with a difference. A team of Bank of St. Lucia representatives and past students were not just visibly present to make a donation, but had also taken over the format and agenda for the entire assembly. According to the bank's corporate communications officer, Annalicia Edmonds Ogist, the bank heard of the school's effort to meet some of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and decided to lend a helping hand. It's very important to us at Bank of St. Lucia to continue to do what we can to preserve our natural environment. Uh, we've had a number of programs that we have supported, like the Joakali pop-up shops. And we actually had our Greedy for Green campaign a few years ago, which we're hoping to revamp in 2020. So doing something like this really fits in with our corporate social responsibility program. And we're very, very happy to have presented Sister Rafina and the girls at SJC with the cups today. BOSL donated hundreds of reusable plastic cups branded with the school's logo and in the school's distinct house colors. According to the principal, the initiative to ban the use of all plastic and styrofoam products at the beginning of the new school year falls under goal number 12 of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which is responsible consumption and production. 
From last term, we started with the project of the garden, the environmental um, aspect of it, where students will be, different clubs will be responsible for caring for that space so that they make it their own without litter. And we also looked at the reusable um, cups and plates and we wanted to start with the cups, take it a step at a time. And Bank of St. Lucia heard of our initiative and they came on board with it uh, by presenting the cups to the students. This, we think, is a great initiative on their part, and, our pa and they are our past students, so um, it warms our hearts to know that they are coming back um, to assist us in this venture. I love the colors, and I think that it would be great for the girls since they have, very, they have a lot of house spirits. BOSL continues to show its commitment to the development of education and the sustainability of the environment by supporting initiatives like these, especially those which target and involve the youth. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Novel Aquayol. La main pop se chimer bon santé. Y a absolument nécessaire pour laver la main si vous voulez tien bon santé. Quand même si vous pas ni glossitaine ou ça fait ces bagages là. Coutez. Laver la main souvent et puis glonnet avec savon après condition qui ca simer vermin. Par exemple, on peut laver la main après vous changer d'ailleurs pas, servir très vite, occuper les gens qui sont blessés et bien malades, après vous occuper les animaux et après vous entamer les ordres. Et si vous n'avez pas de glow, vous avez servi de faire hand sanitizer et de alcool pour 30 secondes. Lavez la main souvent, ça c'est une manière pour empêcher les maladies. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, prenez le bureau d'information santé à numéro 468-5349. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle à Creole. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui est responsable pour la formation en gouvernement de la GIS, à ce moment-là, la télévision nationale pays à NTN, qui a posé la Nouvelle à Creole. Monsieur, Madame, Primus Hutchinson. Le travail en Département des Affaires et Services de Météorologie a continué de trouver bénéfice pour projet de réduction des as en PIA, ça c'est DVRP. Ce officier, ce officier ça là, j'ai trouvé étroitement à cette ici même, et aussi régionalement, à l'Institut des Affaires Météorologiques Caribla, en pays Babad. Étroitement, quand il place ce officier ça là, à des meilleures position pour fournir information à sa situation temps, et situation cyclone, et god de l'eau pour les citoyens cette ici. Tout effort ça là, c'est pour aider le pays à pour préparer plus mais si il y a un désastre naturel, si vous faites ça là, quand ils suivent ces entraînements ça là, mais si vous qui suivent ces entraînements, quand vous prenez divers sujets concernant qui ne peuvent faire et puis mauvais temps avec problème de goût de l'eau, c'est officiel. Tu veux un diplôme après étude qui y qui a aidé y aux capacités ou ressources services météorologiques à cette ci à considération dommage qui fait et la vie qui pède le dimanche passé, cyclone Thomas et Trofla, la veille Noël, et c'est des gouttes cyclone qui a trouvé, avec qui a trouvé en huit juin maintenant. Directeur pour service météorologie André Joye, qui a quoi n'importe investissement qui fait pour renforcer ce système qui a adressé mon dieu quand il plus de problèmes de l'eau qui a affecté le pays et aussi pour renforcer capacité de ce service à la à des gouttes outils pour connaître plus de goûts de l'eau, mauvais temps et la waï, qui est véritablement réduit à ce pays de la vie à cette ci Le ministère des Éducations et du Développement Sustainable a fait un grand succès pour établir un programme de meilleure protection pour l'école PIA. C'est parce qu'il y a un groupe les étudiants en garde sec, j'ai trouvé sélecté comme officier pour guider meilleure protection pour l'école. Ces étudiants sortis à l'école Premier Methodist Gordon et Walcott Memorial commençaient à étonner ça là des ans qui passaient. Ils apprennent de manière pour prendre précaution des défis et ni l'esprit présent pour pire situation qui peut occasionner une menace de santé à l'école là. Mais aussi de manière pour procurer aide si ils ont blessé, avaient trouvé blessé, avaient perdu conscience. Le mode d'étonnement, c'est Yon qui a trouvé un programme de l'école qui a une initiative contre une manière pour ménager les ménager ressources des désastres dans le secteur de l'éducation. Le coordinateur pour le programme de l'école Mercedes, la Princesse Codra, dit que ces étudiants 
te tuve eton ma pudiza ek pudiza ek kom yo ki a gwad sis kai ki tele kol tu suite planja a plas pou etone yon lot set pou pwen responsabilite sa la. Se te di an sa la kai seve eton ma pou pwen pou kosyo asouchi men a kai e ousi a komin na men. Ofisye de edikasyo Martha Foster felicite le kol methodis pou inisiative sa la. Se bak pou devlopman a kaib la ki finansi pou gam la. Dipatman santi, twi kosane de wapo de plizye moun ka sofe pi vomisman ek wilashman an se simen na ki pasi ya. Se yon vermin ki ka eni koz yon la flamasyon an fwi si mol moun ka ka lokasyon e mouve mal boude ek la fiev. Ek yon pe tou veyi si yon fe kontak e pi yon moun ki ja afekte e be manye abe manje ki kontamine me e ka pli afekte tiz afan ek le pli gwa sitwaye. Ministère a conseillé public là pour toujours laver la main avec savon, particulièrement après au faire briser et bien vomi. Toujours laver les jumes avec fruits avant de manger. Laver tout ça au cas savé bien comme il faut. Je commande aussi ou pas aller travailler et bien l'école sur le relâchement ça là et bien qu'à vomi. Ou juste 48 heures de temps après au trouver ce relâchement. Département a fait tout ça qui peut. Pour corriger la situation, il y a conseillé tout le monde pour toute qualité pour que ce soit nécessaire. Et visitez le Health Center si la situation est la vie plus mauvaise. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle aujourd'hui. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour vous remercier. 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 Après ça, je vous remercie pour vous remercier. Merci à Pearl Primus. Here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Partly cloudy skies becoming cloudy at times with some scattered showers and possibly isolated thunderstorms. A tropical wave is expected to bring cloudy conditions, showers and isolated thunderstorms over the islands during the forecast period. Another tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Tides for Castries Harbour low at 12.16 p.m., high at 6.47 p.m. Tides for Viewfort Bay low at 1.43 p.m., high at 7.54 p.m. Seas are slight to moderate with waves 3 to 6 feet or 0.9 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.53 a.m. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.